So you say you can't meditate. I'm willing to bet it has to do with one main misconception. I used to have this misconception about meditation uh, before I learned how to meditate. Uh, and this is before I met my mentor who taught me how to meditate, basically. Um, I used to think that it was about clearing my mind of all thoughts and becoming one with the universe. But what if that wasn't what meditation was all about? What if, just hypothetically, it's instead about focusing the mind on something very simple? So if you can focus your mind on something very simple, then it opens you up to a whole world of possibilities of on, in learning how to meditate. This is what freed me up personally, because I used to think to myself, I can't do this. You know, if you knew how it was in my mind, you knew it would be impossible to stop it. And I was right and I was wrong. You know, I was right that I couldn't stop my mind, but I might have been wrong about meditation. Uh, I don't necessarily think that there's one way of meditation, so maybe somebody out there knows how to rid their mind of all thoughts. And if you could do that, awesome. But if you're like 99% of the population of human beings that can't just stop their thoughts on a dime, then this is going to be a lot more useful for you, okay? Um, I would say the brain is a lot like an untrained puppy. If, if it's untrained, it pees on the carpet, it chews up stuff you don't want it to chew up, and it's very destructive. However, if you train the puppy well, it becomes a beautiful life companion. And it's the same thing for our brains. If our brain is not trained very well and we can't focus on what we want it to focus on, then our brain just kind of does whatever it wants through the day, chasing after things to try to satisfy its craving for fulfillment in some way, shape, or form. And this turns into a lot of suffering that is unnecessary. So how do you train the brain? Well, we need a focal point, all right? In the beginning, when you're learning how to meditate, the focal point, generally speaking, is always going to be about breathing and breathing in and breathing out. You've probably heard this before if you've been exposed to meditation a little bit. Breathing in, I am aware I'm breathing in and breathing out, I'm aware I'm breathing out, okay? Uh, that's a focal point. Mindfulness is always mindful of something. Mindfulness energy is not just by itself. You can't just have, be mindful in general. If you're mindful, it just means you're practicing mindfulness of something often, okay? So this focal point can be anything. It could be so many different things that I don't even want to begin to list it. Breathing, uh, talking, listening, watching this video, washing dishes, going to the bathroom. You can practice so many different things mindfully that I'm not going to get into it, all right? But let's just say for the sake of argument that you're trying to practice sitting meditation and be the perfect sitting meditation practitioner and you're sitting and you can't stop your thoughts, right? Because you still think it's about clearing your mind of all thought. Again, focus the mind. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And then here's the catch. This is where most people get lost. At some point in time, because they're human beings and because we're all human, I suppose if you're watching this and you're not a human being, then welcome. Uh, but our brains are always going to, especially in the beginning, be untrained and they're going to wander. Just accept that that's a part of the process, not a failure of it. If you think it's a failure of meditation, then you're going to beat yourself up and you're going to think you can't do it right and you, why, why am I even bother trying? I'm just sitting in this room doing nothing. I'm just wasting time. If you've had thoughts similar to that, then welcome to the club because most of us all start out there, okay? Um, this thought leads to this thought, right? And then you're off and running into monkey mind. Mm -hmm. Swinging from branch to branch, the monkey mind just is lost in time and space doing whatever it likes to do, right? Your whole intent and focus was to sit there and breathe for 10 minutes, but you're thinking of these thoughts for, I don't know, maybe three and a half minutes, and then something miraculous happens. And I still don't have a really good explanation for this. At some point in time, you become aware that you're no longer focusing in on your breath anymore. I don't know why, but it just happens, right? Spontaneously, you could be in mid-thought, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not focusing on my, my breath anymore. There's one of two options you have in this moment, right? When you get to that point, you can either beat yourself up and think that you failed and you're not doing it right, or you can be very gentle with yourself and return your focus back to your breath. That's as simple as it gets. If this cycle 
was a part of meditation. And I would even say that it's very similar to weight training. Um, if you're a little bit knowledgeable of weight training, you know, uh, let's just say that this is a dumbbell and up, down is one rep, up, down is two reps. Then when you do this, it's one repetition. And if you can do one rep, you can do two reps. If you can do two reps, you can do three reps. And it doesn't matter if you only do one rep in 10 minutes. It doesn't matter if the next day you do uh, three reps or 10 reps. It's all additive. The beautiful thing about practicing mindfulness is that the energy that you're cultivating, it doesn't really dissipate. It's, it's kind of like a better metaphor is a drop in a bucket. And it seems like nothing. It seems like pff, I got a drop of water in a bucket. What, what's, what, what good is this drop of water? But the more you practice this repetition, just like working out in the gym, you slowly become stronger, right? And then instead of the, the puppy brain, you know, wandering off and chewing all over the furniture and peeing on the carpets, it becomes a really great companion. And you begin to learn how to control your mind a little bit better. And then yes, after days and weeks and months of practice, you'll be able to maintain focus on that uh, in-breath and out-breath for a lot longer before you drift away. I have other tricks and techniques on how to uh, keep yourself in the present moment as well. But again, it's not necessarily about uh, clearing your mind of all thoughts. So that's the important thing. If you can get that out of your mind, at least that one thought, then you open yourself up to doing some really good reps. And hopefully that will uh, lead you to a more peaceful state of mind. And, and that's a really good place to start if you're new. And there's definitely a lot more guidance I can provide. And if you're interested, please subscribe, follow, and I'll be sure to give you guys some more stuff uh, in videos to come. All right. Happy travels.